One of the reasons that ADHD is not well recognized by primary practitioners is that its validity has for many years been challenged. It's hard to believe that the first medical report about ADHD in youth was published in the, at the beginning of the 20th century, but still at the, end of the, at the end of the 20th century, adults and ADHD was not widely recognized. One of the reasons for this was that prominent psychiatrists held a theory called developmental delay. This theory claimed that the ADHD child's brain would catch up to the normal brain by adulthood, and hence adult ADHD didn't exist. One reason that some doctors thought that ADHD disappeared in adulthood was that some of the more disruptive symptoms uh, did attenuate. So for example, the hyperactive child that was running around and climbing on furniture stopped doing that. The hyperactivity turned into an internal sense of restlessness, difficulty perhaps sitting in meetings, uh, doing things that would require being stationary for a long period of time. However, the inattentive symptoms of the ADHD child remained strong and impairing. And these symptoms, disorganization, difficulty to attend to daily tasks, these symptoms still made it very difficult for the ADHD uh, adolescent and adult to succeed in life. ADHD adults also learn to compensate for their symptoms. So for example, you might have uh, an ADHD lawyer who is somewhat successful in his law practice, but he has to work twice as hard as his colleagues to get the, to get the job done. This compensation for symptoms was sometimes misinterpreted as, as symptoms disappearing, which was wrong. The failure to recognize the validity of adult ADHD had severe consequences. Patients were literally taken off their medication in adolescence because doctors believed the disorder had disappeared. In addition, ADHD medications were not studied in adults and they were not FDA approved for adults. The primary care doctors who wanted to treat ADHD had a difficult time doing so because they had no approved medications. Incredibly, insurance companies would stop approving ADHD medications once the ADHD child reached adulthood. And finally, doctors were simply not trained to treat ADHD in adults. So a primary care doctor would go through their entire medical training, medical school, residency, and perhaps never see an ADHD patient and never hear about the disorder. Today, adult ADHD is accepted as an adult disorder primarily because there has been an extensive deal of scientific research studying adult ADHD from a variety of perspectives. Perhaps most importantly, in the 1980s and 1990s, follow-up studies of ADHD youth began to show that this disorder did not completely disappear. So for example, if you were to interview a thousand ADHD youth when they were in childhood, and then look at them again in adolescence, interview them again when they were adults, you would find that two-thirds continue to show impairing symptoms of ADHD in adulthood. So what does this mean for the adult population? We now have epidemiologic studies in the United States and in Europe that show the prevalence, prevalence of ADHD in adults is about 5%. Today we estimate that about 10 million adults have ADHD but have not been diagnosed or treated for the disorder. And even more worrisome, those adults that are treated for the disorder tend to be undertreated, meaning they're treated with lower doses than are effective and typically have not used adjunctive treatments to their medical treatment. There are many other studies we could talk about that demonstrate the validity of adult ADHD. These include genetic studies that shows ADHD runs in families. If you have an ADHD child in a practice, in a pediatric practice, we know that there's about a 25% risk that one of their parents will have ADHD. We know from brain imaging studies that adults with ADHD have brain abnormalities that are similar to what we've seen in child ADHD. And finally, we know from treatment studies, any medical treatment that's been shown to work with child ADHD also works for adult ADHD. These types of research, these epidemiologic studies, these genetic studies, these imaging studies, and these treatment studies have all converged. So now in the 21st century, Literally one century after child ADHD was first discovered, we now know that adult ADHD is a valid disorder. I'm very happy to say that today, the medical profession recognizes ADHD officially and unreservedly. The American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic Manual recognizes adult ADHD as a disorder. The American Medical Association's journals regularly publish articles about adult ADHD. We no longer have difficulty publishing our articles, getting our grants funded, ADHD is recognized. It's recognized by the National Institutes of Mental Health to fund research in adult ADHD. Adult ADHD is regularly treated by many psychiatrists. And today, some PCPs treat adult ADHD. We hope more PCPs will treat it, be treating adult ADHD because the need for treatment cannot be met by the adult psychiatrists that are available. And that's why we developed this educational program to train primary care practitioners about adult ADHD. We really need you to pitch in and help adults with ADHD. Thank you.